Ya, yeah, welcome back friends. Nina shukuru Mwenyezi Mungu aliyenifadhi hai na aliyekuhifadhi hai ukiwa na uzima mpaka unasikiliza kipindi hiki. Bila shaka Mungu atakuwa amekupa uzima na ndio maana umeweza hata kusikiliza tena kipindi hichi kutoka kwa Dr. Mlero Lectures. Ninaye kufundisha ni Dr. Mlero na leo tunaendelea na topic yetu ya genetics. Na leo tutaendelea na kipengele ambacho ni cha types of volatile materials. Kwenye kipindi kilichopita tulikuwa na discuss kuhusu chemistry of volatile material. Leo tunaendelea ku discuss kuhusu types of volatile eh, materials. Tukiwa tumeshamaliza chemistry, tunaendelea na types of volatile eh, materials. There are two principal types of volatile material found in the body of living organism. These are deoxyribonucleic acid which is DNA and the ribonucleic acid which is RNA. The difference between the DNA and the RNA is only in the sugar. Utofauti wake mkubwa ni kwenye sugar pamoja na bases. Lakini utofauti uliotengenezwa dia ya majina ni sugar. Huyu hapa anatengenezwa na deoxyribose sugar wakati huyu hapa anatengenezwa na ribose sugar. Difference kati ya hizo sugar mbili deoxyribose pamoja na ribose sugar tumeziona kwenye kipindi kilichopita cha chemistry of volatile material. So these are collectively called nucleic acid. They are collectively called nucleic acid. And why are they called nucleic acid? It is because they are located in the nucleus of the cell. So the term nucleic acid is used simply because these volatile materials they are located inside the nucleus of the cell. Unaona bwana? So DNA is the genetic material in most of the living organism including the higher level ones while the RNA serves as the genetic material in some viruses. Kinachomaanisha hapa nini ni kwamba DNA ni genetic material ambayo iko kuanzia kwa virus, e, iko kwa bacteria, iko kwa protoctista, kwenye fungi, kwenye plant, lakini pia hata kwenye animals kuna DNA. Lakini RNA always haiwezi kawa peke yake kama genetic material mpaka iwe na nani na DNA except for some viruses. Kama ambavyo tutaenda kama ambavyo tumesoma kwenye classification kwa virus they either contain RNA or DNA. Virus huwa has contain DNA na RNA at the same time. They contain either DNA or RNA. Manake virus yakiwa ni wa RNA ambayo tunamuita retrovirus virus wa RNA hawezi ku contain tena nini DNA kwa sababu virus wa RNA maana yake tayari nani ni retrovirus hawezi contain DNA tena virus wa DNA hawezi contain nini RNA unaona labda kwa mfano kuna virus wengine ambao unakuta virus ni wa RNA lakini kuna some stages of the life cycle ambayo ana change ile RNA anairudisha kwenda kwenye DNA kwa kutumia enzyme anaitwa reverse transcriptase enzyme kwa mfano ni HIV virus katika life cycle yake na hopeful utakuwa umeshasoma kwenye classification lakini pia kama haukusoma basi hiyo ni shida ya mwalimu wako wa classification let me continue with the uh, genetics unaona bwana so dna is the genetic material in most of the living organisms including the higher level ones while the rna serves as genetic material in some viruses Ko RNA ina save kama genetic material katika virus 2 lakini DNA ina save kama genetic material kwenye organism wengi so this is because RNA is chemically less stable than DNA short lived and in capable of replication in most organism RNA ina shida gani it is chemically less stable why to share discuss kule kwenye chemistry Kamba the presence of hydroxyl group in RNA makes RNA more reactive as compared to the hydrogen which is uh, which is less reactive as compared to the hydroxyl group present in the ribose sugar to discuss kwa kipindi kilichopita unaona so RNA is chemically less stable because it's more reactive RNA is short lived in aishi muda mfupi na incapable of replication in most organism haiwezi ku replicate katika organism wengi So now let's discuss one category of um, uh, these genetic material after another. So to turn on RNA and then later we shall move to the DNA it depends with your time. 
kama muda utatosha tuta discuss kwa kipindi kiki lakini kama utatosha basi tuta discuss kipindi kingine tuanze na ribonucleic acid which is RNA this is the type of nucleic acid which is largely found in the cytoplasm kwa ribonucleic acid inapatikana sana sana kwenye cytoplasm remember tumesema is largely found in a cytoplasm hatujasema is found in the cytoplasm sometimes you can find RNA in the nucleus in what conditions tutasoma hapa na tutaona in what conditions unaweza kukuta RNA kwenye nucleus RNA is synthesized on one of the DNA strand by the process called transcription and in order to be clear let me magnify this ili kwamba tu tunaenda tu tunaenda pamoja ni kuze tu iwe kubwa namna hii hapa so tunasema kwamba RNA is synthesized on one of the DNA strand by the process called transcription ko RNA zote ambazo tutakuwa nazisoma RNA zinatokana na DNA RNA zinatengenezwa kutoka kwenye DNA kwa process inaitwa nini transcription unaona in other words RNA is made as the transcript copy of a portion of DNA kinachukuliwa kipande fulani cha DNA kinakuwa copied unatengeneza a copy of a piece of DNA so a certain piece of DNA is copied and that copy of a piece of DNA is what you call it the RNA this transcript passes out into the rest of the cell where it serves as the blue print specifying a protein amino acid sequence unaona kwa hiyo hii piece ya DNA ile kwa copy hii sasa inatoka kwenye nucleus kwa kupitia nuclear pole inaenda kwenye nini kwenye cytoplasm na ndio maana tulikwambia kwamba ni some of the situations unaweza kaikuta RNA iko kwenye nucleus hasa usiniweze kwamba itakuwa inatafuta nini ikiwa synthesized mle kwenye nucleus intatoka kwenda kwenye cytoplasm so sometimes you can be investigating the cell and then you can find the RNA in the nucleus why it will be found in the nucleus because itakuwa iko synthesized na haijatolewa nje bado bado iko ndani ya nucleus unaona bwana ko RNA ni transcript copy ya DNA ambayo hii ina act the blueprint yani inakuwa kama muhuri fulani ambao unaenda ku specify aina fulani ya protini itengenezwe katika cytoplasm unakuwa ni kama muhuri fulani a blueprint unaona bwana in other words we can define RNA RNA is the single stranded polymer of nucleotides where the pentose sugar is always ribose and the organic bases are adenine guanine cytosine and ulacine this is uh, this is the uh, simple way to explain or to define RNA that it is the single stranded polymer of nucleotide kwanza yenyewe ni single stranded polymer of nucleotide maana yake nucleotide zimeungana kwenye kipindi hicho pita tu discuss nucleotide ni kitu gani where the pentose sugar is always ribose pentose sugar tulisoma kwenye kipindi hicho pita na organic bases hapa tunaye adenine guanine cytosine and ulacil so kwenye RNA hatuna thiamine tuna ulacil badala ya thiamine tukienda kwenye DNA in place of ulacil we have thiamine kwa hiyo wakati hii copy ya DNA inatengenezwa pale sehemu ambapo alitakiwa akae thiamine anakuja kukana ni ulacil unaona kwa nini anakaa ulacil because this is an RNA molecule chemical bonds in RNA are phosphorylated bond which hold together nucleotides and hydrogen bonds which hold together complementary bases pair in transfer RNA the hydrogen bonds in RNA they are only found zimeonekana kwa ziko katika transfer RNA peke yake haziko katika other categories of RNA so tunapokuwa tunazungumzia phosphodiester iko katika RNA zote lakini hydrogen bond iko katika transfer RNA peke yake what is transfer RNA we shall discuss later according to the types of RNA we have three categories of RNA tuone structure of RNA structure muundo wake RNA ikoje how is the RNA RNA is the single stranded polynucleotide chain single stranded polynucleotide chain polynucleotide that means many nucleotide poly means many so the single stranded polynucleotide chain the nucleotides are held in place by means of phosphodiester bond kwa zile nucleotide zimeshikwa na phosphodiester bond phosphodiester bond kazi yake ni kuunganisha nucleotide moja na nucleotide nyingine there are four types of 
nitrogenous bases in the structure of RNA which are adenine which is abbreviated as A, guanine G, the cytosine C and ulacil U. This is the structure of RNA. I have to explain the structure of RNA. Single stranded polynucleotide chain. The nucleotide they are held in place by phosphodiester bond. Come share the RNA pod single stranded polynucleotide chain. That is the structure. Eh? Like in the nucleotide, they are held by phosphodiester bond. Eh? And the bases which are present there are four. She mentioned the nitrogenous base is attached to carbon. One, unona. Nitrogenous base is attached to carbon one, while the phosphate group is attached to carbon five. Unona. Nitrogenous base may attach to carbon one. Phosphate group may attach to carbon five. Hydroxyl groups are attached to carbon number two and carbon number three. Carbon number B na carbon number two kuna nini hydroxyl. The phosphate group of the next nucleotide in sequence is linked to the hydroxyl group on carbon number three. Of the preceding nucleotide, this arrangement repeats itself several times to make RNA a long structure. So, what was explained in this information is what um, you can observe here. Now, this this is our ribose sugar, and then you can see this is carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four. Then here we have carbon number five, and then here we have the phosphate group. Now, to talk on explain here, Tuchukua tuna explain yapo katika yu maerezo ndo hichi hapa. Kwa mba the nitrogenous base is attached at carbon number one. This one, and this one, and this one. They are attached at carbon number one nitrogenous base. This is ulacil, adenine, and then here we have guanine, na hapa ni cytosine. They all attach at carbon number one. And then from there, the phosphate group is attached at carbon number five. As I told you, ini carbon number moja, number mbili, number tatu, number nene. Number tano ya ponona hii hapa. So, I mean number moja, number mbini, number tatu, number nene, number tano hii ya ponona. So, the phosphate group imekuja kuatachi kwenye carbon number gabi. Imekuja kuatachi pale kwenye carbon number tano. Hiyo ndiyo phosphate group. Sasa, unazo kono kwa mba phosphate group hii hapa. Uku imeatachi kwenye carbon number tano. Lakini upande ule wapiri imeatachi kwenye carbon number gabi. Number tatu hii. Moja, mbili, tatu. Hii ni carbon number tatu. So ndo mana tukasema kwa mba Ile phosphate group ime attach kwenye preceding sugar Kwenye carbon number gabi Number 3 Carbon number 2 Number 2 na number 3 Zina hydroxyl group Hiza katikati kwa nini number 3 wa ina hydroxyl group Kwa sabu ya hydroxyl group ya number 3 Ime attach na ime react na na yule phosphate Ila pale number 2 ndio hydroxyl anabakia vile Huyo hydroxyl ya naibakia pale kwenye number mbili Ndo wanaifanya RNA iwe less stable Kusubabu Huyo ndo wanaifanya RNA iwe reactive molecule As compared to the DNA Kwenye DNA yapo kuna hydrogen peke yake Hakuna hydroxyl So this hydroxyl group at carbon number two Is the one which makes RNA an stable molecule Or is the one which makes RNA the very reactive molecule As compared to the, uh, to the uh, DNA molecule Kwa tucho kisema ni kwamba uh, these atoms tumesukumba the phosphate group the phosphate group of the next nucleotide in sequence is linked to the hydroxyl group on carbon number 3 of the preceding nucleotide. Kwa hiyo upande moja phosphate ina attach kwenye carbon number 5 upande wa pili ina attach kwenye carbon number 3 and this arrangement repeats itself several times making the RNA long structure. It has to be noted that the position of the hydroxyl group in the carbon 2 of the sugar gives the molecule an electrostatic negative charge. Inafanya molecule electrostatic negative charge. It is because of this charge the hydroxyl group repel negatively with a negatively charged phosphate group attached to the carbon 5 of the ribose sugar. This chemical structure makes RNA a long and coiled molecule as it appears in the figure below. Now, unazo kwa hizi swali kwenye mtiani kwa mba why RNA is the long and coiled structure. Explain why. The reason behind njiyo iko hapa wame kwerezea kabisa kwa mba wame kumbia kwa mba the positioning of hydroxyl group in carbon 2 of the sugar gives the molecule an electrostatic negative charge. Inafanya molecule yu na negative charge. Hii negative charge inafanya RNA yu straight. It is because of this charge 
the hydroxyl group repel negatively with negatively charged phosphate group. So the RNA is the long one called molecule because the negatively charged and the negative charge uh, present in the hydroxyl group at carbon number two tend to repel with the negatively charged phosphate group attached at carbon number five of the ribose sugar. And thus RNA is long and called molecule. So the appearance of the RNA molecule, actually this figure tend to summarize um, this figure tend to summarize how the RNA uh, happens and this is the very short piece of RNA about to me on your chateau a four bases was a corner a four bases and was in as a range the RNA but RNA itself it's made up of thousand of nucleotides on one as I wish I discuss later depending on the categories of RNA kwa hiyo hiyo tumeshaeleza why the RNA is long and called molecule furthermore the presence of reactive hydroxyl group attached to carbon 2 of which is sugar makes the wool RNA molecule prone to hydrolysis. Kwa hiyo, e presence hydroxyl group inafanya molecule nzima RNA iwe prone to hydrolysis. Iwe ni laisi kuvunjwa vunjwa na enzyme prone to hydrolysis. This is the reason why RNA is stable. Why RNA is stable? Kwa nini kwa sobe presence of hydroxyl group which is reactive group and hence makes RNA prone to hydrolysis or makes RNA prone to any chemical reactions which are going on in the cell. This is the reason why RNA is unstable and hence unstable for storing genetic information. Now, unaweza kusema kwamba tulisema genetic information uh, genetic materials in a store genetic information. Genetic material they store genetic information. Now, RNA tunasema it is unstable to store genetic information. What does this mean again? Yaani kwamba genetic materials in a store genetic information. Lakini unakuta tena tunasema RNA it is unstable to store genetic information. Hasa wewe mwenyewe unaweza kuwa na maswali kichwani mwako kwamba inakuaje tena? Iko hivi, always RNA is used to transfer genetic information not to store as it is mentioned in the rules of genetic material. So tunapozungumzia genetic material we are talking generally of DNA which is store the literal information in living organism. It is the DNA. But the RNA is used to transfer, to transfer, because the information in the DNA has ways the katafsiri wa bila RNA. Ko RNA na fanini? RNA anachukua maelezo kwenye DNA, anaya copy. Akisha ya copy yale maelezo kwenye DNA, ndipo anaenda kuyapereka kwenye cytoplasm or other, other processes, other stages ambako inatakiwa. So, yeah, RNA it is unstable and it cannot be used to store genetic information it's only be it is only used to transfer genetic information unaona it is structure is weak and it can easily fold into conformation with the three dimensional structure unlike the dna unaona bwana the hydroxyl group the hydroxyl group discussed here it are discussed the hydroxyl group discussed here is completely absent in the oxyribose sugar backbone of DNA. Hence, the letter does not undergo hydrolysis easily, making it suitable genetic material. Kwa DNA, ukisha ona wamekwandika wame maerezo, maerezo wafu wamesema the letter, manake nuli ya mushoni. Hapo tukona zungumzia vitu vili, RNA na DNA. Wamushoni na ni DNA. Kwa the letter, manake DNA does not undergo easy, hydrolysis easily. Kwa nini kwa sababu? It may lack the hydroxyl group. General rules of RNA. Rules of RNA are situational depending on the presence or absence of DNA. In a tegemea kama hii RNA iko na presence or absence ya DNA. In the presence of DNA, it collaborates with it to control heredity and protein synthesis. In the presence of DNA, in a side ya control heredity li pamoja ya protein synthesis. In the absence of DNA, it alone controls heredity and protein synthesis. For example, in bacteria, RNA only, katika virus kama HIV virus, HIV virus ni mfano wa retrovirus, coronavirus ni mfano wa retrovirus, influenza virus ni mfano wa retrovirus, hizo virus zote zina RNA, nabadu zina survive na zinaishi, unaona? 
So RNA can perform function in absence of DNA or in the presence of DNA depending on the situations. Kwa kutegemea na situation hiyo ime toke aje. Ime toke aje. So yeah, tulisha on a structure of RNA na tulisha discuss kulingana ale maelezo. So you need to have this uh, more information regarding the structure of um, RNA. Uh, these are just extra info. Yani easy information ambazo they are not necessarily uh, they are not necessarily lakini they are necessary unaona um ni information ambazo unaweza kukuta vitabu vingine unaweza kukuta vitabu vingine havijaandika unaweza kukuta vitabu vingine vimepuuza unaona lakini mimi naandika ili kwamba kuweza ku develop knowledge yako nzuri ya biology so more info about the search of rna the chain has two ends unaona chain ya rna it has two ends you can observe kwamba huko kuna E, kuna vile na kule kuna vile. Unaweza kaona huko imeishia kaboni ya tano huko imeishia kaboni ya tatu So the chain has two ends, the fifth end and the third end. The fifth end and the third end means the five prime terminal and the three prime terminal. Kwa kuna upande unaitwa five prime terminal na kuna upande unaitwa three prime terminal which indicates the carbon number in the RNA sugar backbone. The five prime carbon had a phosphate group attached to it and the three prime carbon hydroxyl group unaweza kuona hii ndio inaitwa three prime terminal au three prime carbon ile pale na hii ndio five prime carbon ile pale five prime kwa hiyo molecule ya RNA hata ya DNA inakuwa na five prime pamoja na three prime unaona so five prime inakuwa na phosphate three prime inakuwa na hydroxyl group this asymmetry gives an RNA or DNA strand a direction. Kwa hiyo RNA au DNA zinakuwa zina direction. Na direction hizi tunaangalia nini? Tunaangalia 5 prime pamoja na eh, tunaangalia 5 prime pamoja na 3rd prime. Zile prime za RNA na DNA ndizo zinazotuambia direction hizo DNA. Unaona For example, DNA polymerase work in a 5th to 3rd direction. That is it adds nucleotide to the third end of the molecule yani the hydroxyl group thus advancing to the to that direction unaona kwa hiyo hivi hivi ni vitu ambavyo hivi ni vitu ambavyo sasa hivi ni vitu ambavyo sasa unavielewa tukisema works from fifth to third kwa nini kwa sababu tumeshakuelezea uh, the orientation of RNA it has it has direction unaona so the five carbon in the ribose backbone and in, a number is starting from O. Unavuzi ya sabu isi kabo ni unanza kwenye O yule pale kwenye oxygen yule pale. So, when you count the, 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 the carbon numbers, they really try to magnify this in order to ezi kuwa pamoja hapo kwenye kukount iso carbon. So, tunanza kwenye O, then tunafata, tukishanza kwenye O, tunaenda hivi, clockwise. So, moja, mbili, tatu, Nne, na finale tano unaona this is the way we are counting we are counting the this is the way we are we are counting the, the carbon katika hizo sugar unaona hiyo ndio namna ambayo huwa tuna count carbon kwa ndio nasema kwamba the five carbon in the ribose backbone are numbered starting from o in a clockwise direction therefore the carbon which had the base Attached, yani A U G O C. Attached is called carbon one. The second carbon and third carbon both as a hydroxyl group. The fourth carbon closes the ring via ester bond. Unaona. And the fifth carbon is outside of the ring, bearing bearing attached to fourth carbon on the side and the phosphate on the other on the other unaona kwa hiyo um hapa kuna maelezo yamejirudia ambayo hayakutakiwa kuwepo the fourth carbon crosses the ring the fifth carbon is outside of the ring ibe ah uh, okay this is being uh, my head ilikuwa inasoma bearing okay being attached to being attached to fourth carbon being attached to the fourth carbon on one side and phosphate on the other 
strictly carbon numbering is not after the ring direction but rather it comes from the linear configuration such as when ribose is not in the ring form kwa carbon numbering it require me anzia toka kule ambako uh, ribose ilikuwa haijawa closed kwenye ring lakini huku tunafuata kile ambacho kuna na hesabu kule mwanzoni now twende sa types of rna there are several types of rna but the most common types which we have vital rules in gene expression are three kwa hiyo sio kwamba tuna type tatu tu za rna ziko nyingi nyingi sana ya yeah, sisi tunasoma tatu na tuta discuss tatu na our major concern will be these three these are classified based on the allocation and the function so we classify rna based on the location and the function however all are involved in protein synthesis the three types of rna are kwanza kuna messenger kuna transfer pamoja na ribosome messenger ambao tuna bibiates m rna m rna tuna transfer pamoja na ribosome so tuanze kum discuss messenger kwanza messenger rna is the single stranded molecule formed on a single strand of dna by the process any magnifier is id to one kwa aya 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 taka ni magnifier hapa tuone kwa ubora sana yeah it's okay now okay yeah now messenger rna is the single stranded molecule formed on a single strand of dna by a process known as transcription unaona kwa hiyo kutengeneza messenger rna kutoka kwenye dna tunafanya process ambayo inaitwa transcription transcription inatusaidia kutengeneza a transcript copy inatusaidia kutengeneza copy ya dna it con constitutes about 3 to 5% of the total rna of the cell kwa hiyo inachangia 3% hadi 5% ya toto toto rna of the cell during formation of messenger rna only one strand of dna molecule is copied only one strand of dna molecule one strand of dna molecule is copied the synthesis of messenger rna is described later kama vile tutako na discuss baadaye kwamba how messenger rna is synthesized to discuss katika a process ya protein synthesis the base sequence of messenger rna is complementary copy of the dna strand the base sequence of messenger rna is complementary is complementary copy of the dna strand being transcribed and varies in length according to the length of polypeptide chain for which it codes unaona kwa hiyo base sequence ule mpangilio base katika messenger rna unafanana na mpangilio wa base katika dna unaona na urefu wa messenger rna unategemea na urefu wa dna ambayo inakuwa copied unaona bwana so the length of the messenger rna depends on the uh, length of the dna which is which is copied katika mazingira hayo unaona bwana so as yet the mechanism determining which strand is to be copied has not been demonstrated hakuna mechanism ambayo inajulikana ya kuelezea kwamba je tuta copy strand ep ya dna ambayo itatufaa Messenger RNA is manufactured in the nucleus. Inatengenezwa kwa nini? Kwa nucleus. Messenger RNA enter the cytoplasm where it is it it is associated with the ribosomes and acts as template for protein synthesis. Kwa messenger RNA kitoa kwa nucleus inapita kuja kwenye cytoplasm ambako inafanya kazi kuweza kutengeneza nini? Protein. So it acted the template hii ndio kama barua ndio maana inaitwa messenger ina carry message so its major function is to carry message from the dna which is present in the nucleus to the uh, cytoplasm or to the ribosomes which are present in the cytoplasm this message carried by the messenger rna it can be translated unaona 
inakuwa translated by the ribosomes into the protein chain au into the polypeptide chain which is protein unaona bwana kwa hiyo messenger RNA inachukua message ambayo ile message ribosomes zina uwezo wa kuitafsiri kuitranslate kwenda kwenye meaningful ya kuarrange amino acids so in the case of bacterium okay sija marizi hapa unaona most messenger RNA exist within the cell for a short time most messenger RNA they exist for a short time in the case of bacteria this may be a matter of minutes whereas in the developing red blood cell the messenger RNA may continue to produce hemoglobin for several days lakini baada ya kumaliza kazi inakuwa degraded inavunjwa vunjwa na ndio maana there is the need to synthesize more and more messenger RNA whites because after using the messenger RNA then the molecule is degraded kwa kama nilivyokuambia messenger RNA kama jina lake linavyosema kazi yake ni kuchukua message message from the uh, DNA which is present in the nucleus to the uh, ribosomes which are present in the cytoplasm and when this message is translated by the ribosomes in a perikea a synthesis of a protein chain rules of messenger RNA messenger RNA is in a kazgan messenger RNA carries the genetic information how genetic code from DNA in the nucleus to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm unaona cause inachukua genetic information how genetic code kutoka kwenye DNA ambayo iko kwenye nucleus to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm inachukua genetic information kutoka kwenye DNA kwenda kwenye ribosomes katika cytoplasm this genetic code contains the information about the type of amino acid that should be joined together to form polypeptide molecule unaona so the genetic information carried they 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 carry instruction inachukua maelekezo kwamba you need to join methionine and isoleucine and phenylalanine watakio join this should start then followed by this by this by this mpaka hiyo chain ifanye ikami like unaona bwana in other words it carries the genetic code of what type of protein to be synthesized so the genetic information is carried from the nucleus to the ribosomes in cytoplasm so this is the major rule of messenger RNA ukiona maelezo yote ujerea basi unaandika it carries the genetic code of what type of protein to be synthesized hiyo ndo rule ya messenger RNA in addition each messenger RNA contain non coding or untranslated sequence that may carry instruction for the ending translation or termination of protein synthesis this will be described well later when we'll be discussing regarding protein synthesis now let's move to ribosomal RNA ribosomal RNA the ribosomal RNA as the name suggests he inakuwa iko kwenye ribosomes Unajua baadhi yenu hamjasoma vizuri cytology but actually the organelle which we call them as the ribosomes they are combination of ribosomal RNA and the protein so ribosomes they are combination of ribosomal RNA pamoja nani na protein so ribosomal RNA was the first RNA to be identified and it makes up approximately 80% of the total RNA it makes up approximately 8% of the total RNA so you can see kwamba among the three categories of the most common RNA performing functions in the cell ribosomal RNA ndio yuko kwa population kubwa yuko kwa kiwango kubwa kulinganisha na eh, RNA nyingine ribosomal RNA is synthesized by genes present on the DNA of several chromosomes found in the region of the nucleus called nucleolo organizer So there is the region of the nucleus known as nuclear organizer. Unaona ambako kwenye nuclear organizer kuna kwa kuna genes, kuna genes ambazo hizi genes zilizoko katika nuclear organizer ziko kutoka kwenye chromosome mbalimbali lakini ndizo ambazo zinaorganize kwa pamoja na ndizo ambazo zinatengeneza nani? Ndizo ambazo zinakuja kumtengeneza huyu ribosomo RNA. Unaona bwana? So ribosomal RNA it is synthesized by genes present on the DNA of several chromosomes remember this it is different from the messenger RNA which is synthesized from 
uh, simply one DNA. So this is synthesized by the genes present on the DNA of several chromosomes. Marake is in a gene ambazo kwa kwenye chromosome mbali mbali. Tofauti na kule kwenye messenger RNA. The best sequence of ribosomal RNA is similar in all organisms from bacteria to higher plants and animals. Best sequence of ribosomal RNA is similar. It is found in the cytoplasm where it is associated with the protein molecule which together form the cell organelle known as ribosomes. So what you know as ribosome, kire unachu kijua wee kwamba ni ribosome. Ribosome ni munganiko wa ribosomu RNA pamoja na protein. Ribosomu RNA pamoja na ribosomu protein. They combine together to form an organelle known as ribosomes. So it is the major structural component of ribosomes which is the cell's machinery for protein synthesis. More than half of the mass of ribosome is made up of ribosomal RNA. Zaidi ya nusu ya ribosome zimetengenezo na ribosomal RNA. Zaidi ya nusu zaidi ya nusu ya ribosome zimetengenezo na ribosomal RNA. So hopefully nikikwambia hapo nako naelewa kwamba zaidi ya nusu ya ribosome ni kitu gani hicho tunacho zungu Zaidi ya nusu ya ribosomes zimetengenezwa na huyo ribosomo RNA so hope flow hapo nako una unaelewa kwamba ribosomo RNA ziko kwa kiwango gani unaona bwana ah sikumaliza huku kusoma information team unaona hai sikumaliza yeah sikumaliza okay it is composed of the complex molecules in the two sections. Imetengenezwa na complex molecule ya two sections. The large subunit, large subunit LOSU and small subunit SUU. These subunits are made up of one or more RNA, yani one or more ribosomal RNA strands. Tuna strand nyingi katika ribosome unaona. So it's made up of one or more RNA strands and more varieties of ribosomal proteins. Kwa kuna kwa kuna ribosomal RNA pamoja na ribosomal protein they all combine together to form RNA. Here the messenger RNA code is translated is translated kazi ya ribosome ni kutranslate, kutafsiri. Ni kama alivyo mtafsiri wa lugha, unaongea Kiingereza na tafsiri kwenda Kiswahili. So the ribosomes they translate, unaona? They translate. Unaona bwana they translate the message carried by the messenger RNA in a tafsiri ujumbe uliokuwa mbebwa na messenger RNA into the sequence of amino acid in a polypeptide chain so polyribosomes au polysome is the complex of ribosomes and the strand of messenger RNA complex ya ribosomes ikiwa zimeungana na strand ya messenger RNA zinatengeneza kitu kinachoitwa polyribosomes it enables several ribosomes it enables several molecules of the it enables several molecules of the dotuendelee huko sasa hiyo polyribosomes it enables several molecules of the same polypeptide to be, to be produced simultaneously hii tutaenda ku discuss in detail huko mbele uh, na inatokea sana sana katika prokaryotic cell tutaenda kuona kwenye difference kati ya protein synthesis ni prokaryotic pamoja na eukaryotic cell now the role of ribosomal RNA it associates with a set of proteins to form ribosomes. It associates with a set of proteins to form ribosomes, which physically move along the messenger RNA molecule while reading it and catalyzing the assembly of amino acid into protein chain. Unona, kazi ya ribosomo RNA ina read, lakini pia ina catalyze. Unona, ina read what is written in the messenger RNA. It reads the message in the messenger RNA, but also it catalyzes the assembly of amino acid into a protein chain. It is therefore the site at which the messenger RNA binds interpreted, it binds interpreted and the respective amino acid are brought by the transfer RNAs and joined together to form polypeptide chain during protein synthesis. Messenger RNA na bind kwenye nani kwenye ribosomes unaona katika hiyo ribosomo RNA akibind kinachofuata nini anakuwa interpreted interpretation natokea 
yani ku translate ku interpret unaona akisha kwa interpreted respective amino acid zinaletwa na na transfer RNA unaweza kaona jinsi ambavyo hizi RNA zina interact katika kazi zao maana tayari tumesoma messenger RNA but when we are coming to read about the rule of ribosomal RNA ribosomal RNA ana translate message yaliyokuwa imechukuliwa na, na messenger RNA kwa unaona zinaingiliana wakati huo hii message kisha kwa translated by the ribosome RNA it is the transfer RNA which carries amino acid and then it bring this uh, amino acid to the ribosomes unaona transfer amino acid, transfer RNA ndio ambayo inachukua amino acid na kuileta pare kwenye ribosomes hatimaye ile message inakuwa translated na kisha kwa translated i mean hatimaye amino acid moja na mwingine wanaungana unaona bwana so amino acid carried by transfer RNA and joined together to form polypeptide chain during protein synthesis in other words ribosomal RNA plays a structural role in ribosomes the organelle that function that function is is your art the organ that function at the site of translation here the messenger RNA code is translated into the sequence of amino acid in a polypeptide chain that the rule of ribosomal RNA it is the structural component of ribosomes organ ambaye ana act kama nani ana act kama site of protein synthesis so in summary held together it held together the growing polypeptide chain and the messenger RNA inashika inavishikilia pamoja namba 2 it translates converts base sequence of the messenger RNA to amino acid sequence of the protein molecule by catalyzing the formation of peptide bond between two amino acid kwa hiyo ina translate ina convert the uh, base sequence of messenger RNA Unaweza kusema it translate how it converts the base sequence of messenger RNA to amino acid sequence of the protein molecule by catalyzing formation of peptide bond between two amino acid by catalyzing the formation of peptide bond between two amino acid Now let's move to the transfer RNA which is our last category of RNA katika zile tatu transfer RNA This is the small molecule comprising of a single strand of nucleotide. Hii ni small na ina single strand of nucleotide. The existence of transfer RNA or soluble RNA sometimes inaitwa kama soluble RNA. So existence of transfer RNA or soluble RNA as it sometimes referred to was postulated by Crick and demonstrated by Hogland in 1955. So unaweza kuona ni miaka ya juzi juzi tu sio muda sana hata bubu yako anaweza kuwa alishazaliwa abu yako baba yako anaweza kuwa alishazaliwa it is manufactured by nuclear dna unaona inatengenezwa na dna pia it makes up about 15%, 15% of the total rna of the cell and has approximately 8 nucleotide per molecule inakuwa na nucleotide ngapi angalau 80 kwa molecule moja it is the smallest of all rna ndo rna ambayo ni ndogo kuliko nyingine unaona bwana Nadhani umepata baadhi ya vitu hapo kuhusu hiyo transfer RNA and then from there what can we say structurally all transfer RNA molecule are very similar secondary structure in which the single stranded chain is folded into a clover leaf unaona kama jani la clove clove ni nini karafu inafanana na jani la karafu unaona bwana kwa hiyo transfer RNA inafanana sana na jani la karafu into a clover leaf shape with one end yani fifth end of the transfer RNA always ends in the base guanine G rest the third end which is an acceptor stem third end in ito acceptor stem always ends with the base sequence of C C A in structure transfer RNA upande mmoja inaishia na base guanine upande mwingine inaishia na C C A kule kwenye C C A third end ndiko ambako amino acid yanakuja kujishika sawa the base sequence of the rest of the molecule is variable and may include some unusual bases it is variable na tofautiana na inaweza ka include unusual bases such as inosine i and pseudouracil y pseudouracil y kwa hiyo every amino acid has its own transfer RNA we have 20 common amino acid also there are transfer RNA for each amino acid 
Transfer in year had three hairpins, hairpins in a mikunjo mitato and an acceptor stem where amino acid is covalently attached. Kwa ina hairpin tatu pamoja na an acceptor stem. Yo tena kuna katika structure. The looping of the chain results in the pairing of the folds of organic bases. Hence the formation of hydrogen bonds. Kwa sabu gani kwa sabu kuna maeneo ambayo ime jikunja hii transfer RNA. The molecule has four recognition site. Ina recognition site ngapi? Nne. Ina three hairpin. Ukumbuke. Ina three hairpin. Pamoja na acceptor steam. Lakini pia. Ina recognition site ngapi? Nne. Turn to zero nezo site. Kwanza the upper site which is third end. Ambo tuisema amino acid ya na na giatachi. Recognize si nini? Amino acid. Ina recognize nini? Amino acid. Whereas the lower anticodon site recognizes messenger RNA. Kumbe kuna site inayo recognize amino acid. Kuna site inayo recognize messenger RNA. The T loop recognizes the ribosome. Unaona? Where the D loop site recognizes an enzyme called amino acid transfer RNA synthase. Unaona? Hivi vitu vinne vyote, yani amino acid, messenger RNA, ribosome na amino acid transfer RNA synthase. Hizi vitu vinne vyote vinaunganishwa na na transfer RNA. Na hivi vitu vinne vyote vinahitajika katika protein synthesis. Unaona? Ribosome inahitajika kwa protein synthesis. Messenger RNA inahitajika kwa protein synthesis. Amino acid transfer RNA synthase inahitajika ili uweze kutengeneza peptide bond. Pamoja na amino acid yenyewe nani ana anahitajika. Unaona? So kilichopo hapa ni kwamba kilichopo ni kwamba ribosome ina 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 inafanyaje ina ina, 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 ina ina tafsiri ile codon ile codon kisha tafsiriwa transfer RNA ambaye anafanana na ile codon anavutwa na ribosome anakuja akishakuja hiyo transfer RNA anatengeneza a temporary bond with anti codon anapotengeneza temporary bond with anti codon remember on the T loop imeshikana ime, ime na nani na ribosome on the D loop inakuwa na amino acid transfer RNA synthase ile amino acid iliyochukuliwa kule juu by Catalyzation of the amino, amino acid transfer RNA synthase Amino acid hile ya kule juu Inaunganishwa na amino acid mungine Isha unganishwa peptide bond ya tengenezwa Protein ina kutoka Na kudiscuss kwenye detail katika protein Synthesis The triplet based sequence of the anticodon Is directly related to the amino acid Carried by the transfer RNA Carried by that transfer RNA molecule So each amino acid has its own transfer RNA molecule which transfer amino acid is present in the cytoplasm to the uh, ribosome. Kila amino acid, each, each amino acid has its own transfer RNA a molecule which transfer amino acid present in the cytoplasm to the ribosome. Consequently, it acts as an intermediate molecule between the triplet code of the messenger RNA and the amino acid sequence of the polypeptide chain. Koi ina act kama intermediate molecule. Ina act kama intermediate molecule. Now, to zoom pale. Aya, hopeful nazo uka, uka observe. Kia ambacho na kiona hapo kwenye page. Now, here we have this is our transfer any molecule. Uh, this is T loop. This is D loop. Kama tiko zima T loop ina recognize ribosome. D loop ina recognize um, amino acid transfer RNA synthase uh, anticodon ni pale chini kwa mfano hapa ni AAG hiyo ndo anticodon yetu AAG is base tatu is ndo anticodon uh, pale tuna fifth end ndio ishia na guanine pale tuna third end ndio ishia na CCA huku ndo amino acid attachment site inajiattach hapa kwenye third end wakati upande huu huwa kuna chochote ambacho kinafanyaje kina attach kwa hiyo ndo structure a two dimensional structure for transfer RNA this is the three dimensional structure hapa kuna hydrogen bond hapa kuna hydrogen bond na pale kuna hydrogen bond na pia pale kuna hydrogen bond katika transfer RNA hii hapa ni three dimensional structure of RNA lakini hebu hiyo three dimensional structure wewe achana nayo kwanza tu deal na vitu ambavyo haya again hii hapa ni two dimensional structure of RNA transfer RNA pale tuna 
amino attachment site this is d loop this is t loop this is anticodon na pia pale chini tumekuchelea pia messenger RNA pamoja na codon kwa hiyo kilicho kwenye messenger RNA kinaitwa codon each g a g ni codon wakati c u c ni anticodon unaona kwa t loop hizo ndo loop mbalimbali mbali za nani za huyo transfer RNA ndio loop za transfer RNA so from there to on tuendelee kuona ku discuss kuhusu hiyo transfer kuhusu hiyo transfer RNA so each amino acid is attached to it is specific transfer RNA by its own form of the enzyme which is amino acid transfer RNA synthase this produces amino acid transfer RNA complex known as amino acid transfer RNA unaona with with sufficient energy in the bond between the final a nucleotide of caa and the amino acid to later form a peptide bond unaona bwana so to later form a peptide bond with the adjacent amino acid in this way a polypeptide chain is synthesized all transfer RNA have the same basic structure as shown in the figure below hiyo hapo it is the figure above sasa ndo figure transfer RNA there are more than 20 different transfer RNA molecules in the given cell 60 have so far been identified carrying specific amino acids thus one end of the transfer RNA molecule links up with a specific amino acid and it draws it to the messenger RNA on the ribosome inachukua amino acid inaivuta kuja kwenye ribosome the three unpaired base is at the other end links up with appropriate triplet in the messenger RNA molecule kwa kuna kuna relation kubwa sana rule of transfer RNA the rule of transfer RNA rule of transfer RNA The rule of transfer RNA is to carry activated amino acids from various parts of cytoplasm towards the ribosomes. Kwa inachukua activated amino acid kutoka e, maeneo mbalimbali kwenda e, katika ribosomes. Unaona bwana wakati wa protein synthesis. So towards the ribosomes whenever code word whenever code word on the messenger RNA calls for them to be assembled during protein synthesis this means that assembled uh, this means that upon being activated by atp and under the influence of the enzyme amino acid transfer RNA synthesis the transfer rna pick up the activated amino acid and it takes them to the messenger rna on the ribosome for being joined by peptide bond so as to form a protein molecule cause na kwa joined by peptide bond kutengeneza protein molecule not in most organisms there is no transfer RNA molecule with an anticodon complemented to the codon u a g u a a o u g a u a g u a a o u g a unaweza kuwa na u a g na u g a unazigeuza u a a that's why these codon act as stop codon and sometimes they are known as nonsense codon they are sometimes known as the nonsense code that the end of our discussion regarding ribo nucleic acid na my time is not sufficient now kama ambavyo nilianza kwa kumshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu huu ni muda ambao sasa hivi naelekea kwenye ibada kwa hiyo tutakuja wakati mwingine kuendelea na the oxyo ribo nucleic acid nitaeleza in detail kuhusu uh, the oxyo ribo nucleic acid um, nitaeleza kuhusu um, the evidence that DNA the genetic material not the protein kwa sababu chromosome analysis ilionyesha kwamba tunakuwa na DNA pamoja na protein katika chromosome now what are the evidence kwamba DNA the genetic material not protein i will give you the, the, the evidence and then nitaenda kuelezea kuhusu a structure of DNA nitaenda kuelezea kuhusu DNA replication na vitu vingine so continue to stay with me and then continue to share these sessions to other people thank you and let i wish you nice studies let's see you meet another time